Hey, everybody, this is Perch. Well, Snowmageddon is uh, almost over. You know, uh, the entire, everything shut down here in uh, Texas. Uh, we got about, I want to say about a quarter of an inch of snow. It was, uh, it was rough. You know, the grass had a kind of a sort of white sheen to it. There was, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. It did have some freezing rain. The freezing rain resulted in some ice. You know, ice is slippery. And, and this is one of those things they don't tell you in school down here is that ice is slippery. And that if you drive on ice and like you slam on the brakes, you might slide. And if you slide, you might run into something. And if you run into something, it might hurt you. So, you know, we had some of that going on. I, I don't know. I, 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 I the weather, I, this is going to be my death at some point, by the way, is I'm going to misunderstand or miss, I'm going to, I'm going to undervalue the consequences of weather. You know, to me, it's like there are tornadoes. It's like, okay, logical solution. You know, don't wander around outside. There's lightning. It's like, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't go out with a giant metal rod over your head. Don't, you know, there's snow. It's like, uh, don't, don't drive 80 miles an hour on ice. I mean, I, to me, it's, it's fairly simple, but apparently these are um, mystery lessons that, that a lot of people don't understand. So anyway, uh, but Snowmageddon is, is over. We're into Slushmageddon now, and uh, we'll deal with that for a little while. So that's good. Everybody got to have a couple days off. It's always fun. So what are people thinking about? Well, let's uh, let's go to this mail. This mail reads Dan Slot the Doofus. And uh, who doesn't love taking a shot at Dan Slot? I don't know. Okay, it says uh, let's see what I I I'll be honest. I haven't heard anything from Dan Slot other than him bragging about how he made all the She-Hulk stories and and uh, he's the most important writer of She-Hulk, which to me feels like an attempt to kind of suck up to Marvel because there are people at Marvel who hate John Byrne. Now I like John Byrne. I think John Byrne. And, and what's funny is I like John Byrne, even though I think I've said this on the channel before John Byrne flaked on me once uh, doing a signing and uh, that, that sucked. It's very hard when you're a retailer and you're, you've got people here to expect something and then uh, you don't get the John Byrne that you promised them. And, you know, then you got to make a bunch of excuses, and they're like, "Well, you you never had John Byrne planned in the first place. You lied to us." So they feel like it was a bad situation, uh, but it did resolve itself later, and it, it worked itself out. Um, John Byrne listens to this every now and then, and it, it, hey, 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 John, um, I, I think your uh, X Men Elsewhere is pretty awesome. Okay, I think Marvel should pay you for that. But anyway, um. But uh, I think that one way to gain favor inside Marvel, I should do a video on this sometime, like the 10 ways that you could make, you know, you could you could suck up at Marvel. One of the ways is uh, crap on John Byrne, uh, Rob Liefeld. There's a handful of people that if you if you shit on, then, um, you know, the editors will like you, which is an absolutely terrible, stupid thing. But but it does. This is true. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking truth right now. So truth to power. Uh, in this case, all of you, the customers have the power, but, but this is, uh, this is true. I don't know why it is, uh, petty. It's dumb, but it does exist. Um, so my guess is Dan slot has been going on a bit of a war lately about how he is the, you know, the, the writer of She-Hulk, the one who is the most important one, the one who really made She-Hulk everything she is. And I think if you ask the average customer, they would say that, uh, John Byrne was probably the person who took her to that next level, but. You know, whatever, whatever. If you repeat something long enough, people will believe it. So this says, uh, hey, Perch, not sure if you saw it recently, but, uh, but Dan Slott put out a tweet uh, that, and I'm paraphrasing, went something like, fans will tell us to cut down the X line so it's more affordable, but will then complain the new Wolverine isn't an ongoing and he was saying this as though it was inconsistent, like there's no world he can envision where there are fewer X books, but also an extra Wolverine book. It is this sentiment shared by editorial? Yes. Uh, sorry, back to the mail. Because no offense to Slot, but that's a really dumbass take. If people seriously cannot imagine a world with fewer X books, but two Wolverine books, I don't know how they made it into management. Okay. 
Um, we got so it says also you and Joe touched on this, but is it just me or is the entire X line's trade dress and the font ugly as fuck? I feel it's driven away at least hundreds of prospective new customers because Jesus Christ. All the more offensive is the variants that then use the classic font and character box. I mean, it's right there. It looks better. It's recognizable. What's stopping them from using it? Is it pride? Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, I know someone in the X office for... I know someone in the X office, um, and they, uh, you know, I, I get information there from time to time. Um, the answer, the answer to this is a little bit uh, like, this is going to be the most goofy ass answer I'm going to give you. And I don't, I, I, uh, please understand. I don't believe what I'm about to tell you, but I do believe this is what people think. Okay. I'm conveying information. Don't shoot the messenger. The belief is this, that, um, the fans are never, ever, ever, thank you, Chris Jericho, going to be happy. Ever. And so when they complain, they don't mean it. It's all just they like to complain. But they're never going to they're never gonna tell you it's a good job. They're never going to tell you uh, that, they, that you've worked it out. It's all just they enjoy the bitching too much. That's, that's, what, uh, that's what the fans are all about. And on top of that, um, the X-Men needs to look and feel like something that you're not comfortable with. And this is a, a phrase that's been repeated a lot in the X-Office is we need to make the customers uncomfortable. We need to make the customers feel like, uh, like, like you know, feel the unexpected. And then this phrase, which is probably the one that, that gouges my heart the most is the X-Men line has always been about pushing the fans into places that they're not comfortable with, pushing the customers into places that, that they don't like, and that's why they come and buy the comics. The X-Men has always been about counterculture, punk rock, and, uh, sub and, and basically, I was about to say subverting expectations, but it's different from that. It's, it's pushing them to places of discomfort. That is the mentality of the uh, current group that is managing this line. And um, they also believe, because there have been... I, well, you know what? Fuck it. As long as I'm going for it, let's go for it. Um, editorial has bullshit lied to a number of the creators about how many comics have been sold, what the penetration rate is, and how popular they are. Lied. Full stop lied. And it, 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 they know it. They admit it if you talk to them. And, the, and largely some of the conversation has been a lot of the... And, and Okay, and now I'm taking even another step. I can't begin to tell you... And now I've, I've, got, I've got myself all pissed off at this point. I can't tell you the amount of times I've talked to people in management, TV, people in editorial, who will outright claim that you, and I know several of you are listening right now, you the writer, you the inker, you the penciler, you the colorist, you the letterer, you're dumb as fuck in their minds. You would be shocked how many people inside of the big two believe you're an idiot. They believe that you have no concept of math, numbers, process, business, any of that shit. And they just, they, basically, you're a rube. And they're, that, not, not everyone... Absolutely not everyone in the big two, but there are there's a pervasive thread within several members of the management, i.e. full-time employee staff at the big two, who thinks you're dumb as shit. And if that doesn't piss you off, I don't know what to tell you. But this is not me just stirring up trouble or inventing bullshit. I will tell you, this is, an, this is a uh, position that has been expressed by people in those companies on a on many occasions, and this comes out when they tell you that, uh, hey, you're, yeah, your your comics making like uh, five hundred million dollars. This is something, and and to them, it's a game. I'm not even joking. It's a sick fucking game where they are they're basically seeing what you can get away with. Sorry, what you can get away with, what they can get away with. They're, they're, based, they're, they're like, let's see if this idiot will believe this. 
I've sat at a table next to someone who is still employed at Marvel, and she uh, she she was writing an email on her her phone to a creator, and she's like, "Let's see if they buy this shit." That was exactly her comment, exactly. And she is a relatively senior placed editor in that place, and and absolutely a bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's funny is um, I'm going to get email from a couple people. I know one person. I know exactly one person who all who runs a more popular channel than mine, and uh, he will say he will he will guess this person in in one guess. He will know exactly who I'm talking about. Anyway, um, look, I, I think there's a high degree of. Um, of, uh, of, of people who, who think down about not just the, the customers, but the creators as well. I mean, look, I, the mentality of, you know, it is, it is sick, and, and people believe it. It's like that comment where I said that a lot of creators do not understand why the fans are angry. They don't. I know it's, it's more fun to think that there, there's a you know, four-dimensional chess op where they are... Uh, they know why they're making you mad, but they, they they don't want to admit that they know, and they're going to use me as a mouthpiece to say they don't know, to carry water and excuse them. No. No, because here's the thing. If you are extremely vain, if you're extremely arrogant, you never see the behavior you're doing is wrong. I'll take it yet another step. There are people, there are creators who have left the big two who are egotistical assholes, absolutely, and they believe that their their behavior and their attitude is charming somehow, because you know they'll get a super chat here or there, or they'll people suck up to them, and they're like, yeah, everybody loves me being a bit of a prick. Nobody loves that. They're laughing at you. They think you're a dick. They're here for the show. Nobody thinks you're a good person when you act like an asshole. Let me just pop that little bubble here. I don't know what it is about the creative field, but a lot of people, you know, fool themselves into thinking that they're super witty, charming, handsome, amazing, smart, and they've got everyone fooled. The, the crazy fucked up part is that deep down in their soul, they know. They know exactly who they are. They know what they're capable of. They know what they do. They know. But they've, they've put themselves in so much of a bubble that they... they basically shield themselves from any contemplation that maybe, just maybe, they're not as clever, you know, and, 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 and with it as they think. And that's how people get to the line of thought that says, yeah, fans are always complaining that they want fewer X-Books, but then they say they, they, want, they don't want limited series, they want an ongoing. Dick, anyone with a second grade education understands what people are asking for. They're saying, hey, you're putting out 14 books. Maybe you should put out six books. And of the six books, maybe you should have, you know, multiple Wolverine titles since he's probably the most popular character you have. Was that so hard? Was that so fucking hard to understand? It's not. You know, you know the answer. Stop bullshitting. But you got to bring these people out of their bubble where they're willing to accept that maybe, just maybe, the construct that they built around themselves is broken. Maybe. It's, it's not that weird. I think that, um, I, I don't know. Um, the, the, the problem here in all this, and you've heard me say it before, is comics is too small. When it's run like a, you know, a, a hobby, when it's run, run like, a, like a, a bunch of you know, small people who are running a clubhouse, you get this kind of bullshit. And the thing I feel really bad about, and I'm not going to, you know, I, w I went off on a weird tangent here, so I'm not going to bring names into it, but a lot of the people that have been interviewed on my channel, you can go to the interviews, uh, you know, playlist, take a look at those people. Whether they're doing their own thing, whether they're working for Marvel, working for DC, working for Indies, a lot of people I've interviewed, they they get it. They, they care about comics. The reason why they, they come on and be interviewed it's because they give a shit about you, the customer, the work they're doing. They care. I'm going to bring one person's name into it. I, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, Jim Zub. Listen to his interviews. 
whatever you think about his writing, whether you like it, or you don't. I there is no fucking way you can't claim that that guy doesn't care about comics. He clearly cares, and he he works his damnedest to try and put out the best stuff he can. Do you like it? Do you think? Do you like whether you like it or not? It's kind of a different story. But I'll tell you, nobody, fucking nobody, could come up and claim that that guy doesn't care. He cares, and there's lots of people within comics that care. And the shame of it is, they're surrounded by a bunch of dumbasses who are you know playing stupid games. You know, I, I told that story a while ago of you know on the uh, you know in the X Slack. There was these jokes about how to, you know, screw with the fans and tweak them by making pee-pee jokes in Exterminators. And I had a few creators reach out to me going, I can't believe that's true. I fight with the, I, he's like, I've defended the comics industry and creators to fans who say they're, they're deliberately trying to screw with things. And then stuff like this happens. It makes me mad. It should make you mad. I, I absolutely respect wherever you come from, no matter what comic you write. Uh, if, if you're in it for the passion, if you're in it to deliver a good story, if you're in it for comics, for fans, I'm on your side. Even if you fucking hate me. Even if you hate my politics. By the way, none of you know what my politics are. <laughs> That's very clear. But even if you if even if you think I'm a I'm an obnoxious asshole with bad audio who hates Arby's, all those things are true. I I respect you. If you're here to put out a good story, deliver the fans, if you're an editor, somebody in management who's out to do good work for fans, I've heard from a lot of the smaller companies lately. They're trying, they're pushing, they're trying to make stuff work. I may look at their lineup and say, I don't really like any of the comics you're producing right now. But damn it, you're trying. You're trying to make things good. I don't agree with how you're doing it, but I can't argue with your passion. I'm on your I'm on your side. I, I don't know about Dan Slott. I mean, uh, Jesus Christ, Dan Slott is eating himself to death. What can I say? Him and uh, George R.R. R. Martin are in, are in a race to see who can who can uh, you know be found uh, stuck in a bathtub. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. That's that's cruel. I'm fat shaming now. See what see what the anger has done to me. I don't know. I, I Dan, to me, I, I just hate petty shit. It goes back to what I started said at the beginning. The uh, Dan Slot um, going after who was the you know the the key writer on She Hulk. Fuck, just write good stories, and then you know what? Who will decide that? The fans, the customers, the people who are buying the books. They'll remember you. A lot of people, by the way, do remember Dan Slot's She Hulk. As good, they liked it. They 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 enjoyed that run. To me, the only thing that could ruin that is if the writer goes out of their way in some kind of petty vendetta against a creator who hasn't worked for Marvel in twenty years. It's the only thing that that that's the only thing that could wreck it. But fuck, a lot of people seem to want to take that challenge. Blows my mind. Anyway, uh, this is probably more than you were expecting when you clicked on this uh, video. So there you go. People, uh, people are like, oh, yeah, Perch got pissed off. And this is, I, I don't know. I'm, I try and say things in a logical, ordered fashion. Um, I try and give you my opinion. Look, if you, for all the people who are like, ah, Perch is a fence sitter, Perch is this, Perch is that, Perch is a retailer. You know, I, I don't know if that means anything to any of you, but I had to stand in a store and I had to put my money, money, I hard earned money. You know what it's like to go and bust your ass, you know, helping people do technical specifications around digital transformation and take that money, sink it into a comic shop. You tend to care where it goes. And when if you're in that position, you learn one lesson really, really quick. And that lesson is whatever your own opinion is, whatever you care about, whatever you think about, whatever, whatever's on your mind doesn't really fucking matter to the person coming in with cash in their pocket. That person has cash. Now you can go out and create art, more power to you. And I, I absolutely respect people who have said, you know, I don't ever care if I'm poor for the rest of my life. I want to create the art I want to create. Good for you. You know what you're doing. 
But at the end of the day, you know, you got to sell those comics. You got what my opinion, like, look, I, I can sit there and I can go, I like The Walking Dead as a comic book right now. I liked it. But if I didn't like it, I would be a pretty dumb fucking person if I, uh, you know, yelled at every customer who came in and bought The Walking Dead. That would be stupid of me. It's not about me. It's about the person with the money. You put the money on the, the counter, I'm going to sell you whatever the fuck you want. If I want your money, I'm going to try and figure out what will make you happy. That's what it's all about. So if the fans want fewer books, but more Wolverine, that's not a contradiction. They're telling you what to do. You should take that information. You should validate it. Make sure that, you know, if you do this, are you responding to three people? Or are you responding to, you know, 300,000 people? Figure that out. If you, don't, if you don't know how to do that, well, then you shouldn't be in the job. That, it's that simple. I don't know. I, I, we, we spend a lot of time in life making things complicated for ourselves. I have two daughters. I try and tell them, like, like, just figure out what the simplest path is, the straightforward path, and take it. That's the answer. That's bliss. So it will make you happy. The only way to fuck things up for yourself is, you know, uh, overthink it. Give away your power. All right. Well, I need to wrap this up. But yeah, I think I've passed like 20 minutes at this point. I'm. Uh, what's ringing in my head is like I, I did the interview with uh, Mark Miller. And he's like, yeah, the perfect thing to do is videos that are like 10 minutes long, maybe less, like eight minutes long. I'm like, shit, I average like 14 minutes. And I don't know if he um, if he was, uh, I, who knows, he may listen to videos on double speed. I, I don't know what he does. Um, so he may not, but I, I was like, shit, Mark Miller's calling me out right now. I should correct that. Of course, I, I paid no attention to it because, uh, you know, YouTube is my hobby. This is the one you know, safe space for me where I don't have to worry about taking somebody's cash on the counter. I'm just doing whatever the fuck I want to do. That's cathartic. At some point, I'll stop this channel and then I'll have to do what you all want again and that'll suck. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, Snowmageddon's over in Texas. Y'all have a good time. Don't eat no Arby's. Thanks for listening.